married her, but he didn't marry me. Why? Narcissists behave in very similar ways. Quite simply because we are narcissists. And our need to acquire the prime aims of fuel, control, character traits and residual benefits means that we manipulate in very similar ways. However, there are variations on a theme. For instance, some narcissists will be far more predisposed to the use of physical violence. Some will hardly ever use it, if at all. Some narcissists make a more extensive use of charm and financial firepower to assert control over victims, whereas some will dole out pity plays and sympathy symphonies far more regularly. Of the various manipulations that exist, some narcissists utilize a small set of manipulations. Other narcissists have a much wider range of manipulations available to them. In a sense, you can liken it to an artist. There are some artists who only operate with red, green and blue paint, whereas some have a range of red, green, ochre, tangerine, azure, Tyrian purple, Catholic black and so forth. A much wider and varied palette. And it is the same with narcissism. Although we are very similar with regard to certain behaviours, and of course the outcome, the prime aims, is the same for all of our kind, we do operate through differing manipulations. One of the things which often perplexes a victim, however, is the difference in treatment between one victim and another. And the title of this video, He Married Her, but he never married me. Why? Is just one example of that difference. So, for instance, you might have one situation where, when the narcissist was with you, he put a lot of pictures of you and him all over the internet, on his Facebook page, tweeting pictures of you, sticking them on Instagram. And yet, contrary, of course, to the no-contact regime, you have been snooping around on his social media to look for pictures of him and your replacement, and there are none. Why is the narcissist doing that? In some instances, you find out that the narcissist has introduced your replacement to family and friends, but you didn't meet any of those people. Why was that? Why is it that the narcissist behaved with you in a particular way and didn't, or did, with your replacement or a different appliance? Why does the narcissist engage in certain behaviours with that individual and not with others? Also bear in mind, one of the important factors that you need to look at is ascertaining whether the behaviour has taken place or is actually taking place. Why? Many times in consultation with my clients, victims of narcissists will say to me, but HG... He never did that with his ex-wife. And I ask, how do you know that? And the client says to me, well, that is because he told me. Ah, yes, the narcissist told you. There's a very good chance he was lying to you because he's a narcissist. And therefore, what you must always do is, if you really must get to the bottom of the information, is to seek independent verification of what you're referring to. In many instances, I would say, you stick with your no-contact regime and don't trouble yourself about it. But, if you're reflecting on the behaviours in the past, remind yourself that just because the narcissist says that he didn't do these things with her and he did them with you, he may well very well be lying to you and he did them with both of you or vice versa. And therefore, in other instances, you ought to look for that independent verification. Now, as the example that I've given you, if you know for a fact, because you saw it, that he put lots of pictures up about you and him on social media, he didn't tell you he'd done that, you actually saw them. And now, when you're looking, although it's a breach of no contact, 
you are looking at his social media and you see no pictures of him and your replacement, then you have been able to independently verify that difference in behaviour, which of course leads you to the question of why is it happening? But remember, sometimes the narcissist will tell you that this is what has happened when it never actually occurred. He may say, oh, I took her on lots of holidays, and you're thinking to yourself, he's not taken me on one holiday. Why is that? Actually, if you were to go and do some digging around, you may well find that he didn't take the former girlfriend or former spouse on holiday at all. You're just being told that as virtue of a lie and triangulation with the fabrication. So you must always bear that in mind. Is the difference in behaviour about which I am concerned actually real? Have I got evidence that there is a difference? Or am I being lied to? Now, if you are dealing with a situation, and let's go back to the title of this video, where he always said that he would marry you but never did, and then within six months of meeting your replacement, you know that he's married because you've seen the pictures and you know somebody who attended the wedding, why is there that difference? Many times a victim will think, was she better than me? Is she better than me? Does she have something that I don't have? Has she been able to unlock the secret to a longevity of a golden period with him? And of course, if you have listened to, and if you have not done so already, you should go to my video, Will They Be Happy Together, to understand that this individual is not going to unlock any sudden secret to the longevity of the golden period with the narcissist. But yet, your emotional thinking, because it wants you to feed your addiction to the narcissist, will keep generating these thoughts, will be whispering in your ear, trying to keep you awake at night with these thoughts of, you weren't good enough, she's better than you, he's superior to you, he must love him or her far more than he did you. Perhaps he never did love you because he didn't do this with you and he has with him or her and she has with him. In all those circumstances, this difference is being exploited by your emotional thinking. It is corrupting your narcissistic trait of envy and jealousy to make you get upset, angry, irritated and hurt by this apparent difference in treatment or an actual difference in treatment. Because of that, you then end up becoming preoccupied with it. You think about it more and more. You perhaps mention it to friends. I don't understand. He, I was with him for nine years and he never married me. And yet, he meets Dawn Grade and within six months, he's away marrying her. What's all that about? What has she got that I have not? Why is he treating her differently? And you talking to your friends about it fuels your emotional thinking and brings along the devil's pitchfork. Indeed, in some instances, this surge in your emotional thinking might even cause you to take the step of contacting the narcissist, breaching your no-contact regime further by communicating with the narcissist or even going to see the narcissist to demand, why the dickens did you not marry me and why have you married Annie, Annie No Knickers over there? In those circumstances, your emotional thinking has got hold of you, has corrupted your narcissistic trait of envy and jealousy, and made you breach your no-contact regime. So, you have ended up putting yourself in a situation so that you are feeding the addiction more and more and more. You think about this difference, you talk about this difference, you might even confront the narcissist about why this difference exists, and you're being conned. You must resist the temptation to do it. And you can, because I'm going to give you the answer as to why there is this difference in treatment. It's actually fairly simple. The narcissist did not marry you because his narcissism dictated it was never needed to control you. The narcissism determined that the narcissist did not need to marry you in order to control you and to extract fuel from you and to gain character traits from you and to obtain residual benefits. Therefore, it did not happen. Yet with Dawn Grade, the narcissism determined that in order to get hold of those prime aims, chief of which, as you know, are fuel and control, the most appropriate thing to do 
was to marry that individual. It's not because on an objective basis she is better than you. It is not that on an objective basis that he loves her more than you. Of course, he's a narcissist and he's incapable of love. It all comes down to the necessity of the prime aims. And if the narcissism says, marry this person to get the prime aims, the narcissist will do so. If the individual is able to extract the prime aims from you without marrying you, then the narcissist will not do so. Basically, our narcissism is designed to be effective and efficient, and it wants to get the maximum benefit for the minimum of input. Lesser narcissists are lazy, mid-range narcissists like the minimum of effort. And therefore, if the narcissist can get away with doing as little as possible to get as much as he can out of the prime aims, then he or she will do so. And that is what it comes down to. It's nothing to do with any intrinsic failing on your part. It's not to do with the fact that your tan isn't as good as hers, that your teeth are not as good as his, that you're not as wealthy, that you're not as important, that you're not as handsome or beautiful, or the size of your house, or the size of your boobs, or the size of your dick. It is all to do with a simple factor of the narcissism was able to get what it wanted through not doing something with you, and it had to do something else with that person in order to get it. So some narcissists never marry. Why? They are always able to achieve the prime aims without going so far as to engage in nuptials. Some narcissists always get married. Four, five, six weddings. Some narcissists don't marry that person, but marry the other person. And it's all about the narcissism making that determination as to, does this step have to be taken in order to achieve the prime aims. If it does, it happens. If it doesn't need to do it, it won't. And that applies to so much. So, for instance, he put lots of pictures of you and him on the internet, on his social media, because that was a useful way of controlling you. It pleased you. It made you feel special. With the new person, he doesn't need to do that. He's already getting the prime aims from them without having to take that step. So he won't. Similarly, a narcissist might give you lots and lots of sex and then with the next person doesn't bother as much. Why? Because they didn't need to put that effort in with the other person to get the prime aims, yet they did in order to get it from you. And that is what it comes down to. It is the difference in terms of the necessity of the appropriate act in order to achieve the prime aims and is nothing to do with your intrinsic value. Essentially, it comes down to a question of asserting control over you. If you are somewhat more difficult to control, the narcissism may determine that extra effort needs to be inputted, i.e. have a child with you, get married to you, provide you with a lot of sex, take you on a lot of holidays, put lots of stuff all over social media in order to get you under control because the other aspects of the prime aims are worth that investment. With somebody else, they're easier to control and easier to get those prime aims, so the narcissist doesn't need to put as much effort in. And that's what it comes down to. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.